Well, it's good to be back home after a week of uh, isolation from this corona thing. Uh, it's great. And so we'll just uh, continue preaching because that's the most important thing for me. And so um, John chapter 10, John chapter 10 and verse 11, where we left off uh, last time. I am the good shepherd. These are the Lord, words of the Lord Jesus Christ. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. But he that is an hireling and not the shepherd, whose own the sheep are not, seeth the wolf coming and leaveth the sheep and fleeth. In other words, runs away. And the wolf catcheth them and scattereth, scattereth the sheep. The hireling fleeth because he is an hireling and careth not for the sheep. I am the good shepherd and know my sheep and am known of mine. As the Father knoweth me, even so know I the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. And other sheep I have which are not of this fold. Meaning that, see, the Lord Jesus Christ, um, what happened was the gospel came first of all to the Jews and they had rejected their Messiah. And so the gospel then went to the Gentiles. And um, you and I, obviously, if we're not Jews, are Gentiles. And we need to understand that Jews and Gentiles have the opportunity to be saved, to get right with God, to have forgiveness for their sin. And this is why we, as gospel preachers, preach to everybody. Now, we don't know who is going to respond to the message of salvation. But God wants to give you an opportunity right now to get right with him, to have forgiveness for your sins through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And so we preach to everybody because we don't know who is going to say yes and who is going to continue to say no to the Lord Jesus Christ. But I'm here to tell you that you need to say yes now because now is the day of salvation. Now is the accepted time. It's time to stop hardening your heart against the Lord and come by faith and put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ for your eternal salvation. You see, the Lord Jesus Christ is the one who died on the cross. Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures, and he was buried. But praise God, the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures. He says here, I am the good shepherd and know my sheep and am known of mine. As the Father knoweth me, even so know I the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. Another sheep I have, which are not of this fold, meaning not of the Jews, but now Jews and Gentiles are both being saved at this particular point. And so we need to understand we need God's salvation urgently. It says here, um, Another sheep I have which are not of this fold, them also I must bring, meaning the Gentiles, and they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold and one shepherd. Now the Lord is calling out uh, of the Gentiles a bride, uh, a people for his name. Not only just the Gentiles, but also the Jews at the same time. And both of these folks, whether we're Jews or Gentiles, we make up the body of Christ or, if you like, the bride of Christ. And I wonder if, if you are part of the bride of Christ, part of the body of Christ. You know, the Bible says for all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. It says here, um, there shall be one fold. And one shepherd. Therefore doth my father love me, because I lay down my life, that I might take it again. No man taketh it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it again. This commandment have I received of my father. See, no one could take the life of the Lord Jesus Christ unless he voluntarily, and this is what he did, he voluntarily laid down his life for you and for me because he loved you and I so very, very much. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him 
should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. I wonder, have you believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God? Are you a child of God through faith alone in the Lord Jesus Christ? That one who shed his precious blood for us upon the cross, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Have your sins been forgiven? Are you at peace with God? You know, the Bible says in Romans 5 verse 1, actually to the believers, it says, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. That's something to really have, isn't it? Peace with God. There's one thing to have peace with our fellow man, woman, boy and girl or whatever in this world. But what about peace with God? This is the most urgent thing we need. Because if we die as enemies of God, which is the way that we're born into this world, we are the enemies of God by our wicked works and by our sinful behavior. If we die in that condition, we will be in hell at the moment of death. Now, God does not want you to go down to hell. He wants you to be saved. He wants you to come to faith in his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, the Savior or judge, salvation or damnation, heaven or hell, and it all depends what you do with the Lord Jesus Christ. If you're prepared to come in repentance toward God, that's a change of mind. Simply agree with God that you are a sinner and then place your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, your soul will be saved. This is God's desire for each and every one of us that we would be in heaven and not go down to hell the way we were born into this world. This is where we're headed by default. God does not want that for you, my friend. He's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. A, a change of mind. We will agree with God. I, I realize that I'm a sinner. And then you put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and your soul will be saved. This is what God wants for each and every one of us. There was a division, therefore, again among the Jews for these sayings. And many of them said, He hath a demon and is mad. Why hear ye him? Others said, These are not the words of him that hath a demon. Can a demon open the eyes of the blind? And it was at Jerusalem, the feast of the dedication, and it was winter. And Jesus walked in the temple in Solomon's porch. Then came the Jews round about him and said unto him, How long dost thou make us to doubt? If thou be the Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus answered them, I told you, and ye believed not. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. But? Ye believe not, because ye are not of my sheep, as I said unto you. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Another proof that a child of God can never ever lose their eternal salvation. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. Then the Jews took up stones again to stone him. Um, Jesus answered them, Many good works have I showed you from my Father, for which of those works do ye stone me? The Jews answered him, saying, for a good work we stone thee not, but for blasphemy. And because that thou, being a man, makest thyself God. Jesus answered them, uh, Is it not written in your law, I said, ye are gods? 
if he called them called them gods unto whom the word of God came and the scripture cannot be broken, say ye of him whom the Father has sanctified or set apart and sent into the world, thou blasphemest because I said I am the Son of God, but, oh, sorry, if I do not the works of my Father, believe me not. But if I do, though ye believe not me, believe the works, that ye may know and believe that the Father is in me and I in him. Therefore they sought again to take him, but he escaped out of their hand and went away again beyond uh, Jordan in the place where John at first baptized. Um, and there he abode. And many resorted unto him and said, John did no miracle, but all things that John spake of this man were true. And many believed on him there. I wonder, are you prepared to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ right where you are? right where you're sitting or standing or whatever you're doing, are you prepared to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ? After hearing the witness concerning him from the word of God, that the Lord Jesus Christ loved us enough to die upon the cross for you and for me. But God commendeth, that means he exhibited or displayed his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us in that sinful condition even though we we're in that sinful condition the Lord Jesus Christ loved us enough to sacrifice himself upon the cross of Calvary we've already heard from his very lips that he said um, I lay down my life what did he say he said um, he said uh, Therefore doth my father love me because I lay down my life that I might take it again. No man taketh it from me, but I lay it down of myself. What a sacrifice the Lord Jesus Christ made because he loved you and I so very, very much. I have power to lay it down and I have power to take it again. This commandment have I received of my father. And so the Lord Jesus Christ was willing to give his life a ransom for all to be testified in due time. So if you come to Christ right now, if you realize your sinful condition before him, acknowledge that before God, it's called repentance, as I've said, change of mind. Acknowledge your sinful condition before the Lord, and then you reach out the hand of faith to the Lord Jesus Christ, your soul will be saved. This is what God wants for each and every one of us. He's not willing, as I said earlier in the message, God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Just agree with God that you are a sinner and then put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and you'll be saved. Your sins will be washed away in the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, the perfect Son of the living God, who was made sin for us, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. So what will it be for you, heaven or hell and the lake of fire for eternity? It all depends what you do with the Lord Jesus Christ. Make a wise choice, my friend, and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved for it. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, shall be saved. Well, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Really appreciate that. Have a great night, and uh, I hope you get saved because this is the most important thing, that you'll get right with God, that your soul will be saved through faith in the finished work and the person of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. If you're interested in this, look me up, youtube.com forward slash peace by Jesus Christ. God bless you. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Have a great night as I said.